I'm also completely mesmerized by Peter's response. When he starts to sink, he doesn't flap about and start going, oh, God, God. that's drowning, for those who <laughs> don't understand. <laughs> yeah, um, but his instant response is to cry out to Jesus to be saved. Verse 30 ends with the, two, the three words, Lord, save me. He switches his focus straight back. He knows pretty much what's gone wrong. He looked away. He looked straight back. I don't think Peter would have been frightened, started to sink, and not gone, uh, and looked straight up. I don't think that's the guy he is. If he is, he's a lot more stupid, and I shouldn't have wrote a preach about him. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, he focuses straight back on Jesus via a cry for salvation. And what does Jesus do? He gives it 30 minutes because he's just eaten. And uh, it's to teach Peter a lesson. No. Uh, immediately, he reached out his hand and caught him. Immediately. Straight out. Catches him. So as I've, I've said, this, this does relate to us. Maybe there's something that you feel you're sinking in or you're walking in, you're, you're concerned that if you do take your eyes off Jesus, you will sink. Whatever it is, if you cry out to Jesus, Lord, save me, I pretty much guarantee he'll come and help you. Don't get me wrong, it's not going to be easy. Peter had to walk back to the boat. You're still going to be in your situation. You're going to be in your, in your storm. The storm doesn't end until they get in the boat. They're walking on the waves. Jesus catches him, brings him up, and walks together. And that's what he's promising to do for you in whatever situation you're going through. He will walk on the water with you. He'll walk in your situation. And I do understand that some of you might be saying, actually, my metaphorical wave is too big. It's, it's too big for even Jesus. This guy breathed the universe into existence. Nothing is too big for him. Go to him. Cry out, Lord, save me. Whatever it is, and he'll walk with you. So now I'll, I'll move on to the Peter who climbed back in. It's the, the, the Peter who climbed into the boat. By the end of the passage, this Peter showed initiative. He expected the unnatural or supernatural. He responds to the master's single word. He lost his focus. He sank. He cried out to Jesus. He felt the touch of the hand of God. And he climbed back into the boat. And when he climbed back into his boat, that's where all his friends were. I am pretty sure if I was there, if I was sitting in the boat, I don't know whether you're going to be able to see me if I sit down. If I was sitting in the boat, as Peter climbed back in, I'd been like, you're an idiot. Why do you think you can walk on water? <laughs> it doesn't happen. You know this. You're a fisherman. I'd have done that. I'd have been that cocky guy. But there is one phrase that stops me. You of little faith, why did you doubt? The man who climbed out of the boat, walked on water, sank, touched the hand of God, got lifted up and walked back to the boat, had little faith. How much smaller is my faith for staying in the boat? I've got a bit of an example of this when I, I saw a, a busker in Cambridge um, he was in like kind of the prime spot where you actually need um, speakers to project yourself well enough. You need um, a microphone if you're singing. There's often kind of professional musicians there. And this guy was singing and playing the keyboard. Um, the only problem was, one, he couldn't... Well, I say the only, there's two. One, he couldn't sing. 
Two, he didn't have a mic stand. So he was standing there by his keyboard, holding the microphone, playing like just chords, simple, and it sounded horrible. I'm not going to lie to you. It sounded absolutely foul. Like, <laughs> I wanted to laugh. I was finding it hilarious walking past and just having this guy absolutely dying in the streets of Cambridge. Like, the only people who stopped, I think, were actually mocking him. Um, so I didn't want to be one of those guys to stop in front of him and start laughing at him and, and then not give him any money, which is the reason he's there. Um, so I walk on quite quickly, and Boots is nearby, so I was heading for that to have a little chuckle uh, through the makeup section, that sort of thing. Um, just before I even get the first, <laughs> I hear a voice. Do you have the courage to do that? And that was the single phrase I heard. Do you have the courage to, hit, to do that? And <laughs> that was potentially the most convicting moment of my life because I was going to laugh at some guy from the boat. I was going to stand here and go, you're failing, you're sinking in your water, Peter. And I was going to laugh. But how can I say that when I'm in the boat? I'm safe. I have no reason to try and prove faith or, or courage or anything like that. One of my favorite worship leaders is at my church, uh, when I at college, and he can't sing, and he can't play guitar, but he'll slam it out. He'll just rag it, basically. Probably going to destroy so many songs that way, uh, strings that way. He hardly has his guitar tuned, that sort of thing. He doesn't know a single key, except for the key of praise. So when he stands up, when he leads and sings, he praises. He doesn't just play music and sing. He praises. And it's a guy who's genuinely had encounters with the living God. He's been through so much, and he praises when he bleeds. And because of that, I've had some of my most intimate moments with God when he's been playing guitar horribly. Because his key of praise resonates with the universe and gets my key of praise resonating as well. So when all of us are in the key of praise, it's the most beautiful sound ever. So all I can do, brothers and sisters, is urge you, in view of God's mercy, to offer yourself as living sacrifices and get out of the damn boat. Yeah? Don't stay there laughing and saying, uh, yeah, you sank. You're in a boat. That's just pathetic. You need to get out of the boat before you can even have a say. And as I've said before, Jesus will walk with you. Focus on him. You'll get there. If you sink, cry out to him. He'll help you through. That's all it is. It's as simple as that. Step out. If you do need help, he's there. Try and focus on him, then you won't need the help because he's already helping you. Do not let apathy and passivity kill Jesus Christ as church because that's what I believe that will do. If we all stay in the boat, we're going to see unsaved guys in the street stay unsaved. We're going to see drug addicts still being addicts. We're not going to see any change. We're not going to see young people get saved. We're not going to see young people realize that they don't have to have sex to get worth. So if you step out of your boat, we're going to see miracles. Step out expecting the unnatural. Take the initiative to step out and expect the unnatural. And if you do go wrong, cry out to him. I would always take the hand of God and getting that touch over staying in the boat. So I'm just going to uh, pray for us all. Um, and then if 
I don't know what's happening next. There's, there's some, more, some more music. If you feel like you want some more prayer in anything, um, there's me, Gareth, and Kiefer around at the front. Or if you feel more comfortable staying where you are, um, grab someone near you if you want more prayer. So, Father God, I thank you for this example of the faith that Peter showed. I thank you that he did step out, that he did sink, and he did climb back in. And Father God, I thank you for the lessons that we can learn from Peter and the encouragement we can take from him. Let us not do it for our sake, though, but for your glory. Let us stay focused on you, Father God. Give us that initiative, give us that expectation, and give us those safe steps because you are the Jesus Christ that I love. Amen.